I'm Safi. And I'm Mystic. And this is Lore Together. This is a podcast where a husband and wife team get together to talk about the video game's lore, stories, characters, background, and other such things for video games, because it's the thing we like to do together. We lore together. Yes. Usually you'd hear our buddy in the background as well. We are a family, not just a couple. Yeah. But uh, we want to sleep early today. Yeah. You may hear a baby mantra in the background once in a while, so we do apologize for that at least. Okay. All right. Now with that out of the way, we're happy to announce that we are officially part of the Boss Rush Games Network. Yay. So welcome to an official Boss Rush Games podcast. Yay. We are very happy to be part of the group. We have been part of this first class, inaugurated with a few other great other podcasts, and we're happy to be part of the group. Um, I'm going to try to dump into that Discord at some point and actually start crack a with our fellow podcasters. I look forward to any collabs you can think of. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's going to be sweet. 2021, already starting out. Pretty great on the podcast side. <laughs> and that's what, as a U.S. citizen, that's yeah, all we'll, I'll we'll, say right we'll now. we'll stop there. Even though we are part of a network, we still have our own Patreon. Yeah. And uh, other ways you can also contact us. So if you want to contact us through Twitter or through Instagram, both are at Lord Together. If you want to email us, that is LordTogether at gmail.com. And for Patreon, we have changed around our tiers. So feel free to take a look at that at patreon.com slash lore together. This year is going to be more time dedicated towards our special episodes that will be just for patrons. And we will be doing live streams for the public this year. Yep. And that way, uh, we hope to see some of you guys there. We do have a YouTube channel under lore together, and that's Mm -hmm. where you're going to find any of our live streams. So the Thursday after a public release is when you will see a live stream of what we just talked about on the yep. show. Our first one was Deus Ex. And Which you... <laughs> I'm horrible at... St- so that, and that was my fault. So the lesson is, if Safi is going to do a stealthy game, Safi needs to practice before she does it for public <laughs> consumption. Because it was... We, we ended that early partly because it, it, it was not... And we were like, we're not entertaining anybody with this right now. Right. <laughs> bad next step next stream should be pretty easy for you though because we're going to be going back to a fan favorite franchise with the mist series this episode yay so it's our one year anniversary yes. of the podcast and so we, now we we're had so- one episode last january yeah just the one and this is our second episode in january yeah so so happy one year anniversary to us cheers cheers Ooh, pop the bubbly this is episode 27, and we'll be diving into Riven. Hooray! Which, P.S., is also the name of our island on Animal Crossing New Horizons, because, <laughs> yeah. So if you want to dive into Mist a little bit deeper, um, and some of this is kind of required listening for this episode, because we're not going to cover all of it. Episodes 1 and 2, the very first two, are Mist in its five ages. Yeah. Episodes 10 and 11 is the very important Book of Atris, which is the backstory of one of the series' protagonists. That one also dovetails very much with this episode. It takes place partially on Riven. And if you want our first mini episode, which was between episodes 15 and 16, it's about the Lost Ages that only mentioned in the Game of Mist. Right. So check out all of that. All of those are open to the public now, but keep in mind that... Mini episodes will not be in the future. Mini episodes in the future will not be to the public. They'll be on the Patreon, and we will definitely be keeping diving in and out of the Mist series. Oh, yeah. That's just obviously mystic. We're only as, uh, <laughs> we're only in the second game. We still have two more books and three more games. <laughs> oh, my brother bought you Sorry, one of those. Four more games. <laughs> my brother bought you one of those books as a Christmas present too. You got yep. the book of Tiana, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. Nice. So, nineteen eighty seven, Riven comes out, developed by Cyan Worlds and published by Red Orb Entertainment, which was a subsidiary of Broderbund Software. So 1997, if I remember correctly, the first game came out around 93. Three. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, four years development time. Mm-hmm. We actually have a book all about the development. It's called Mist to Riven, and it's just this really great photo spread and goes into a lot of detail of the developments and everything. When I get it, we're not going to get into that that much here, but Riven took a lot longer. 
they put a lot of time into the development of Riven. Okay, so if you go back on our Patreon, we're keeping the the Patreon streams mm -hmm. closed to patrons just because that was the tier level at the time. Right. So if you go to our Patreon, you'll see that we started playing Riven when we started doing episodes 10 and 11 because the right. live episode... stream for episode 11 was Riven, I mm -hmm. think. Yes. Yeah. Broder, let's, I'm going to talk a little bit about Broderbund, actually, because Broderbund was a game, productivity, and edutainment publisher. They kind of ran the gamut. Mm -hmm. Very prevalent on the Mac. Not surprised that these guys are Mac-focused. Yeah, uh, you have heard of them. Uh, where in the world is Carmen Sandiego? Where that was... in the world <laughs> is Carmen Sandiego? Okay, so just give me a little, a little indulgence moment <laughs> of the PBS kid that I was. I watched that show. Oh, yeah religiously when I was and I had to be in kindergarten I didn't know half of what they were memorizing because of course <laughs> the kids were much older than me but I remember being like I want to well, run Well just makes it so great and I really just wanted to run around and put posts on a map and scream out city names not realizing that they were <laughs> memorizing capitals so I it, you, and then and then you had where in time is Carmen San Diego yeah. which was to be honest the I think was the superior of the two don't at me Anyway, Broderbund published the original Myst, mm -hmm. as well as the 2D Prince of Persia games and a bunch of other stuff as well. Okay. Eventually, they got bought up by the Learning Company, which went defunct a few years later. I actually looked up the Learning Company, and underneath products, it said Shovelware Distributor. <laughs> shovelware? Like, here's a bunch of free and shareware stuff on a disc. Oh, so literally... Here's a bunch of edutainment title shareware on a disc, which shareware, if you don't know, because this is... Kids these days don't know what shareware is. Shareware was basically, here is a demo of like the first three levels of something or, you oh, know, whatever. Oh, okay. And then you would send money to whatever company and you would get the rest of the thing. It was basically like early demos before you had the internet. Shareware was like, here's a disc with a bunch of demos on it. Okay. And share it with your friends, hence share So it's share kind where. of like a digital catalog for... Not always. Um, sometimes it's a single game. Like Doom was very popular in Shareware, so it was Duke Nukem 3D. Okay. Two game series that we would touch on. Eventually, Broderbrun spun off into... Spun off Red Orb. Red Orb backwards is Broder. <laughs> so. Oh, interesting. Okay. <laughs> to manage their games division. Kind of a cooler sounding name, Red Orb Entertainment, as opposed to Brotobun Software. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and those included Riven, Prince of Persia 3D, not the Ubisoft one. This is earlier. Okay. And German Project 3. Both of those series we'll eventually cover as well. We have a long list of things that we're definitely going to cover. Some of these are going to be a lot less intense than others. Probably not a heck of a lot of lore in a lot of more action-y yeah. whatever. Um, then again, we did get two. We did get two episodes on Just Cause. So, <laughs> yeah, it, we did, and it was that was a wild ride, guys. So feel free to listen to spe specifically the second episode. Feel yeah, free Just to Cause to... gets interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so not only is this our one year anniversary episode, it is also, in my opinion, a very important game. Riven is, without a doubt, in my opinion, one of the best realized worlds in gaming. Oh, and you're gonna say why, right? To beat this game, this is a puzzle game like Myst, but to beat this game, you have to think about and look at the world as if you live in it. Okay. Okay. So it's kind of forcing you to... Empathize. Empathize. And with see, a, right. Specifically with a native culture, which, when you think about it... More seeing it, more identifying with their plight in a weird way. But yeah, I think that's... That's very different. Okay, let's just say it. Because, you know, this is the show that doesn't try to get political, and then we play games that get political. We play games that get political that we forget get political. Yeah, that was last episode, wasn't it? And <laughs> then we of, had yeah. to do the live stream after being U.S. citizens at a time like this. That was fun. Awkward. Anyway, so there's a when you're an American citizen, you forget that your perspective of history is that of... of a colonizer. We uh, we we started as colonies. We continued to colonize, and there's uh, Western colonization is very much part of the culture that we're in. So it's very hard for our media to escape 
anything mm-hmm. that kind of fits that perspective. Well, again, to go back to Just Cause, surprisingly, yeah. in the fourth game, part of the story of that game is you uncovering the history that has been lost to colonization. Exactly. <laughs> so everything's kind of always around that patina, so to speak. It colors right. it. Having only touched what little ribbon that I have due to the live stream and then finding out what we know from the book of Atris, the book of Atris, it, it seems like what, you know, the Millers did with this was kind of instead have you be more of a, of an earnest, almost kind of like an earnest anthropologist Mm -hmm. where you're, you're there to observe and understand, but you're not there to change. You're not there to necessarily change everything Right. You're because there with a mission and your mission doesn't involve the people. It will eventually involve the people, okay. but, but anyway. Yeah. And I'll let you get into it because there's a reason why the people aren't part of the plan in the first place. Right. Mostly because Atris doesn't even know what's going on. Right. Right. <laughs> so, Riven, it's been roughly 30 years since the events of the Book of Atris. Yeah. Which is why he has two grown sons at this point. At this point, they're in burned books. <laughs> they're in their, their prisons, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Very brief, one-sentence recap. In the Book of Atris, Atris and his then-girlfriend Catherine trap his father, Gan, on her home age of Riven. Yeah. So, and, <laughs> and, and, and that's really condensing it and ignoring a lot of character growth. And I just want to mention, you'll be like, Catherine, but isn't she not of Earth? Like She is not. Yeah. Yeah. Her real name's Katron, and Atris just can't be bothered to hear anything other than Catherine. He, so that's how She it just is. stops trying eventually. It's one of those yeah. weird things of Atris, but she doesn't take, like, she takes initial offense at it, but she's not bothered. She just kind of, she, whatever. It's... I, I would say the way that it's told in the story, it's like a hearing impairment. Right. I would, that's, and she treats it like that. And I think that's a fair way because I do think that's how it is for Atris. He doesn't, he doesn't know how to hear it any other way. Now, Gen has been trapped for 30 years. Egomaniacs don't sit idly by when threat when thwarted. <laughs> No, they don't. Just uh, which is uh, quite fortuitous thinking about the real world. These <laughs> As days. I wrote that line, I was like, mm. <sighs> "So, Riven, we are sent here by Atris to find Catherine. She has been trapped here with no way home to Mist or Denis. Right. She has been trapped here by her sons. That is, we covered that already. Yes. Exploring, we find the Rivenese are still here. Gen is still a god, but not to everyone. Well, of course, there has to be doubt now because, from what you mentioned in the in episodes ten and eleven, his defeat by his own son and his, at the time, betrothed lady, it's so Jerry Springer when you think about it. Anyway, <laughs> we'll get there. Like, was in front of a essentially an audience of Rivenese people. Not quite, people. but we'll get there. Yeah. yeah, the age itself has split into five islands that have been drifting apart. Okay used to be one island now it's split and is it's 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 basically going through collapse and atris has been working on fixing ribbon as much as possible even to the point that gen can see the changes mm. because gen is for all his faults yeah gen does have a couple quote good qualities and that he is studious yes he is very studious he's intelligent yes and that's about it. <laughs> yeah, just because... He does love one person. We'll get to it. <laughs> yeah, and, and just because... It's not Atris. I, well, well obviously... Actually, no. Mm, I think he thinks he loved Atris. Right. I I yeah. think that's the better way to say it. Um, but, yeah. Anyway, so, Gen has been kind of cataloging the world, trying to understand it better because he's trapped here, and he actually realizes the islands are not are spreading apart slower okay. so the, the speed of their spreading has been decreasing and he surmises this because someone is fixing the book much of Atrus's time is spent trying to fix problems with the age without destroying it and that's a delicate balance in fact he's it's hard because Gen is such a cheap writer yeah that it kind of goes back and forth 
another chunk another chunk of his time is spent trying to figure out how to remove Gan from the picture. He will still not kill his father, which right. is fine. Yeah, I have no problem with that stance. <laughs> there's no yeah, there's nothing wrong with knowing. I'm trying to find the least... Trying to act within your nature. Yeah, within the least morally right. irreprehensible way. He eventually remembers making a prison book. I don't know why it took him so long to remember to make a prison book, considering he put two of them on mist and his sons were trapped in them, but it could have been written that way for the sake of clarity for newcomers to the series when they got his journal. Right. Or, Which is weird, considering it's literally called Riven, the sequel to Mist. <laughs> or... He could have found the prison books and realized what they were without getting trapped in them. No, actually, in his journal, he actually okay. writes that when he was traveling through Denis with his father, he found the formula to make a trap book, a prison book. Oh. Because, But he didn't tell Gen because Gen was taking all his discoveries at that time. Right. And, so the way in yeah. this game, the way that you make a trap book is you make a age, but you change certain passages so that it doesn't link cleanly. Okay. Yeah. You kind of get stuck in limbo. Okay. Yeah. Which is how they do in Mist 1, technically, kind of. It's the same idea. You go into the trap book. If anyone goes after you, you swap places with them. Right. This will eventually be retcon, kind of. It get Retconning in this mysteries is weird. We'll get to it. So he has this trap. He makes this trap book that looks like it links back to Denis. It okay. doesn't. It's a trap. Eventually, he realizes that even with his corrections, though, des the destruction of Riven is inevitable. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, There's my gosh. no way he can fully save the place. He basically... He can delay it. Delay it. But the crash course that Gen put it on is inevitable. Right. Which, to me, immediately makes me think that what Atris is going to want to do next is migrate all the Rivenese. Well, that's his plan anyway. Okay. Yeah. Because he knows he can't leave him with Gen. At this point, Atris is literally looking at the descriptive page, and it is just a garbled mess. Like, the picture mm -hmm. is a garbled mess. He can kind of tell what's going on in the biggest way like oh the sky is blue because you know half this garbled mess is blue so that's mm -hmm. the sky half this garbled mess is yellow that must be the land or whatever so he knows like the broad strokes of everything is still stable right but he can't get a clear picture anymore and it's through that scrambled mess of a link that he sends the stranger through oh, which is why okay. it looks like static and stuff when you go through Okay. He says he'll wait for a signal, but that signal has to be huge, like world-changing huge, because otherwise he's not going to see it. Well, yeah, that makes perfect sense to me, because if you're just looking at somebody that's describing the text of a whole world... Well, he's looking at a picture. Oh. Yeah, he's looking at the picture. It has to be world-changing huge for him to see the difference, because it's so scrambled. He can't see detail. Oh, okay. He can just see, like, this is blue. You know, the sky's still blue. You know, wow. change the color of the sky. Then I'll know you did something. You know, <laughs> Interesting. Okay. We're going to skip to Gen, who has been working for the past 30 years to recreate books to link off of his prison of Riven. <laughs> By pure memory, it sounds like. He's having a hard time of it. The books and ink and everything is possible, but it's not exact to work. He's having a hard time with the ink specifically at this point when we pick up his journal. Mm. And... He's also been studying the star fissure that Atris fell into. This is the events of Book of Atris. He surmises that it is an accidental creation, though. Oh. It's beneficial to Atris and Catherine at the time, but it's unintended on their part. Because he points out, why would Atris allow for his book to fall into unknown hands? Because who knows what's at the bottom of, the, of that rift. Right. Or why would Catherine basically put a vacuum to space in her home and drain it of its atmosphere? Right. So he holds on to this hope that it was unintentional and Atrus meant for this to be a prison and a not death sentence. He's basically just holding out hope that his son's not trying to kill him. Yeah, and he's lucky that his mother raised his son. <laughs> well, and I can't, still can't get over that. But anyway, that his mother raised his son to be a good enough person to not outright kill the man who's trying to outright kill him. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Gen, so I will say, Gen does seem to have love for one person. I did mention this before, and that's Atrus's mother, Keta, mm -hmm. who died in childbirth. He writes of her in his journal in 
two journals actually, saying that he could write her back to life if he could. And for what it's worth, she also did love him. Quote, to Gen, this is on the back of a picture, to Gen, my husband and my salvation, I dedicate myself to the love that rescued me. End quote. Is there an explanation as a story as to being a salvation? No, not that I could find. Um, and there is a separate note here. I was mistaken before when I said that Keta was one of from one of Gen's ages. She is not. Oh. Uh, she appears to have been human from a group or tribe called the Ahmad on the surface of Earth. So somewhere in you know the New Mexico area around the 1800s. So she is. I don't think it's a real thing. You don't think the Ahmad are an indi- are an actual? I could indigenous not people. find anything. I okay. did a quick Google search. The only thing I could find was biblical sources for Ahmad being a location. Okay. Um, but I only did Ahmad tribe. I didn't really dig too deeply into that. Okay. Um. So, so if we were to think of it in real life terms, she is probably of a people from right. the area. They also had Dunny imaging technology, so he surmises they had some contact with the Dunny. So, so so technically probably not indigenous to could, North America. Could be indigenous. Within the canon, the Dene did have contact with at least two people from the surface. I okay. think in this case. If we're gonna count the Ahmad as being one of them, Tiana or Anna would be the other one. Mm, okay. So uh Gen also waxes on about the Dunny number the Dunny and the number five. Quote I have been cataloging the natural elements of this age for thirty for nearly 30 years now, yet I still continue to find evidence of the Denise preoccupation with five. Just so you know, there's five discs, there's five islands, there's a lot of fives in this game. Okay. As a boy, it was clear to me that the number five had special significance to the Denise society. From the ancient heraldic emblems of the ruling elite to the humble homes of the commoners, it was ubiquitous. Hmm. Its presence here is obviously a direct reflection of the minds that designed the texts that I used to compose this age. Further proof that through their art, the Denny masters were indeed creating the marvelous worlds they wrote, and not, as many have mistakenly thought, merely building links to pre-existing worlds. End quote. He's screwing up his logic. Yeah, that's, because that it, yeah, it sounds yeah. really dubious. Well, it could be that they found a preponderance of the number five when cataloging the ages that they link to, right? And that is why it became something, something special. He's putting the cart before the horse. Yeah, you have no proof that, especially as somebody who can't even read the language that well or utilize it that well, he he, he can't really conclusively state something that says that the number five he's shows... fluent in it yeah well but he's not a but he doesn't understand yeah i i can read french can i really read it though do you want to hear me read it no you don't <laughs> we're not going to do well, that for you, to you guys right now so. as we established in the book of atris he also says it plainly here that he is not writing his own words. He is simply pulling passages from a master source and pasting it together like I sometimes do with notes. But I would never trust my notes to create a stable world. You yeah, know? that sounds so gross. That's that's like you Frankenstein a a, a, a planet. That's right. basically what he's doing. I didn't even get Keta's origins correct, and she's the mother of the series' main protagonist. Like <laughs> he, he Frankensteined a, he Frankenstein's his world. He copy and pastes what sounds good and puts it all together with no care for how it affects other things. This is the thing that we establish in Book of Atris, because Atris says he doesn't take care in how his changes affect the tree of probability. Eventually, Gen does get his books that he's making here. He basically turns the entire island, the all of the Riven, into a factory and his own private lab. Um, all he, of Riven? There's a whole island that's basically its whole purpose is to be... Partially his lab, his lab is on this island, but also a boiler for boiling the pulp that comes from a different island that has a logging operation on it. And there's another island that's a mapping uh, island. And there's another island, like, yeah, basically he has put different islands to different purposes, and that's what it is. When you spawn in in Riven, when when you link in in Riven, you emerge in a cage that's on Temple Island, where his temple is. Right. So I remember this now. Yeah, yeah and that's just—he's full of himself. <laughs> you take over the resources of a whole people's land mm-hmm. in order for to make books. That's if 
that isn't a comment on colonialism, I don't, I don't know what is. He does eventually link off of Riven to a new age. Oh. His 233rd age, and he calls it as such, age 233. That's right, because he doesn't give any of them names. He just nope. numbers them. It's desolate, harsh, not a place anyone would want to actually live, but he does make it his home. He builds a, uh, a separate lab here as well as a quarters while he's trying to fine-tune the art. And you're going to love this quote. I'm never going to be ready for this quote to hit me, but you know what? I'm always disappointed again, so at least I know what I'm getting. I must admit that I am proud of my work. To think that in such primitive conditions, I have accomplished in 29 years what it took the original Denise centuries to achieve. Oh, so full of lies. Lies, lies, lies. First off, he's going in with knowledge about what it actually takes already. Yeah. Which is going to shorten it no matter he, what. What it, what it was, d- didn't I say something in like episodes 10, 11 about like he's, he's standing on the shoulders of great people and pretending it's the ground, pretending or yeah. that it's the ground or pretending he is that tall. It's, this is exactly what he's doing again. It's ridiculous. Now he does at this point begin to write a 234th age for himself and the Rivenese to travel to. So he's not just going to abandon them to their fate here. Well, that's because he has an ego that needs to be stroked, and you need people for that. So he's writing this age, as you say, because he has an ego, but he's also dealing with a rebel threat. Wait, rebel threat? Yeah. Now let's get into Catherine. Catherine came here to find Atris, but he's obviously not here. She was tricked, as we we established. I was going to say, are we we suddenly getting Luke Skywalker up in this mix? But no, it's Catherine. That's fine. I, I accept this rebel. She links into the cage that we we linked into. Okay. It's the spa- it's basically where people link in if they use the descriptive book. It's the spawn point essentially. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and is hit with a dart and wakes to find herself underground with the Moiti. The Moiti. Okay. So, the Moiti are also called I think the Black Moiti or Dark Moiti. I can't remember off the top of my head, but they're essentially the rebels. Okay. Long story short, two of Venice witnessed Atris and Catherine leaving during their confrontation with Gen. Oh, okay. They understood very little of what they were seeing, because Catherine disappears into a book and Atris jumps into a fissure that has stars in it. And, and disappears into the same book, essentially. Right. But to them, it was plain at that time that Gen was no god. And Atris, having bested him, was... So, okay, for my fellow Trekkies out there, do you remember the episode where we accidentally see Captain Picard, you know, reveal himself to a pre-warp civilization, and the God question comes up, which, P.S., it was very, it's a very contrived script, but if you're in there for the big ideas, it's a fun time, and... I, I'm having a little bit of a flashback to that idea. Atris would love this about as much as Picard liked it. So, <laughs> Right, exactly. Atris does not like having people worship him. Uh, Katran, Catherine Zervanis' name, yeah. was the spiritually weird girl that everyone saw mm-hmm. and was his chosen wife and therefore was also divine. I mean, why couldn't she also be a god, but... I guess since she's of Riven and Atris was not, right. that's where they're getting that. And here's the kicker. She would come back to free them or lead them to paradise. Or both. So they they already believed this, and then she shows up again. Oh, my God. Why not can't only we that, have normal family reunions, everybody? <laughs> not only that, Catherine, when writing changes to the Riven book in the book of Atris, Wrote in a giant dagger that pierces the land near the location of the starfisher. Oh, okay. This dagger has come to be her symbol to the Moiti. They wield daggers shaped like it. They, it is a calling card they leave. It is a sacred object. Okay, so now I understand why you wanted that to be the symbol on our flag for our <laughs> Riven Island in Animal Crossing. Okay, I get it now. Uh, she doesn't know any of this, and she finds out in a way that is quite shocking. This is probably worse than in The Simpsons when Lisa had the tooth civilization. <laughs> no, not quite. Quote, I sat at the front of a dimly lit and crowded cave as they told a mythical story of my own life. No. 
acting out the battle between Atreus, myself, and Gen at the edge of the fissure. The events have been exaggerated in grandiose proportions. It was offensive, but I was unable to stop it. I was unable to break the illusion which is the very foundation of their hope and purpose, and which has given them courage to band together and rebel against Gen. Wow. Later on, quote, I don't know how to deal with this. I fight it myself. I love these people, my only real kindred, but they will not love me as an equal, which hurts me. I would rather be their slave than their master. Yeah, so, and then there's, in the series, there's this idea of, like, the, one of the best symbols of being a good person is having immense power and never wanting to wield it. Mm -hmm. So she has that same attribute that Atris has that we've been revering all this time. As we said in the book of Atris, Atris says that Gen misinterprets the Dani. Mm -hmm. He thinks the art is the power that built the whole civilization. And it was, in fact, their humility and restraint that built the civilization. So Atris is more Dene than Gen. Which is funny because he's less Dene genetically. Less Dene genetically than Gen. Yeah, it's funny how that can work out. Because Gen is half Dene and Atris is a quarter quarter Dene. Um, Not that it matters. You don't have to be Dene to write because Catherine's not. No, and she was one of several. But... And here's my next question. So if Riven is where Katron, Catherine, is from, mm-hmm. where's her family? Her family where's are her still people? on the surface. She's still in the caves. Oh, okay. And I didn't... <laughs> she does mention them in her journal. I don't remember if she meets them or not. Because the, the, the Moiety go out in garb to basically look like spirits. To look like demons and ghosts and stuff. Wow. Basically playing off the superstitions of the Rivenese. Okay. Who are still faithful to Gen. Mm, All right. Okay. But as the collapse has hastened, Gen has started losing more and more people. And once Catherine shows up, it gets a little nuts. Yeah, yeah, that would be a... I'll be honest. If it's... It's it's a conversion moment. I'm sure for all the people who are not Christian now, if you could legitimately prove out of nowhere... A spark of lightning comes back, and Jesus is like, hey, what up? Let me cure all your cancer and, s- and give you all the riches you desire. Then there would be some people who would be like, yeah, you know what? This atheism thing isn't what I thought it was. I, I could see Catherine coming back, and suddenly people are like, whoa. Yeah. And Gen is aware that she's here. Oh, which must be... That's got to be an interesting feeling for him. Because he probably also doesn't know that Catherine and Atris were romantically involved as well. I think he does at this. He might. You think he might? Okay. I think he might surmise it. Okay. That'd be a big leap to make for just a friend. To Gen. True. True. Like, there, like there's people that are friends that everyone's like, oh, I, I die for you or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. But Gen... Pro- Gen being Gen doesn't care for anybody in that way. So okay. for him, he would probably surmise that they're romantically involved. Okay. Yeah, you that's know? that's fair. Okay, that's a very fair interpretation. Yeah. So Gen puzzles over her being there, actually. Quote, if Catherine did bring a linking book with her, then I'm halfway there. Home. Right, that makes sense. If not, then she is trapped in the fifth age, and I can assume that my emotionally crippled son will soon be along to rescue her. Whoa, excuse me? Where did we... You mean the one that you possibly emotionally crippled? Can we take some responsibility for the abuse that you exacted on no, your he, progeny? Like, what the heck? He still thinks that he what he did was love. Yeah, no. Gen is the type of father who considers it love to disown your gay son. Not that Atreus is gay, but he's like that type of father. He's that type of... He, that's his archetype. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He's a jerk. Okay. I will concede that point, but still, I, I don't know. There's just part of me that keeps on trying to think rationally about it, and I have to remember that it's colored in a very different way when it comes to Gen's perception of reality. Oh, you're going to hate this. Oh, great. I love it when you say things like that. Gen keeps the people in line with uh, the great Wark. Uh-uh. Okay, you got to explain this. I'm going to. The Great Wark. A Wark is an animal, by the way. Okay. 
It is basically like a tusky whale shark thing. So it lives in the ocean. It lives in the waters, yeah. Okay. And basically, he's used this as... Well, this is a practice he's used for years, but has now started using it more fervently with the rumors of Catherine's return kind of making the the villagers more rebellious. Okay. Uh, basically, he suspends the prisoner over the water in the middle of the village and lures them into the jaws of a giant fish. It's a public execution. No, that's evil. More evil? This happens so frequently that the way you learn to count in Riven is by playing with a children's toy that you count by the number of steps down the rope goes with the person into the jaws. That's how you learn the numbering system in this game. It's a children's toy in the school. You know, <laughs> there are very few times in my life that I've heard of evil using That's how often... propaganda in such a way in a schooling system. But he- here we are. And... That is how often people have been executed, that it's the kids are nonplussed by it, basically. That's a yikes for me, dog. <laughs> just I just can't I can't deal with that right now. <laughs> it's oh man. The Moeti eventually get one of Gen's failed books. Basically, he's been trying for a long time. This one almost works, but doesn't. Mm-hmm. And Catherine is not able to only make it work and turn it into an age. Oh, that they can escape to. The Rivenies call it Tay. There's no numbering here. Tay like Tay Zonday, the singer of Chocolate Rain. Spell T A Y, you tell me. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's it. Okay. Gen has figured out a way to jurig fire marbles to power his books. And the power is basically used to kind of, basically, if you don't use the exact right materials, you can use vast amounts of power to make the book still kind of work. So. Wait a second. Like. You create the books with a certain ink in a certain way with the right language and they work. Right. But if they don't work, you can turbo if, power them? Well, more like if it's 99.99% there and you just can't get it 100% there, you can use certain types of power to kind of bridge that gap. Is my understanding. I'm okay. not 100% sure. Okay. Uh, but basically, Catherine figures out that they can use gen's apparatus because he has a bunch of these scattered around to power this book now they can only use it when he's using it like when he pop when he's using the power that's the only time it's on so when he's traveling is when they can travel so catherine being her extremely clever self she is very clever writes a power source a crystal into the age so that she can get some on her first trip nice smart smart woman obviously At some point, Catherine is captured. By Gen's people? Yes. And Gen quotes, like, I lost two men in the process, but I would would trade a hundred more for the prize. Oh, great. We're objectifying her as property now. That's really not a comfy feeling for me. (laughs) And we have to remember for, if we're remembering episodes 10 and 11, part of the reason that, like, Atris was horrified that Gen wanted to, at that point, Mary Catherine was probably due to the fact that her her understanding her prowess with the the art with Denis and being able to write these fantastical worlds mm-hmm. in in a way that that Atris had never even thought of dreaming before. Atris is like she's dangerous. She can write empires for this man, right? And and he would just be able to rule over them. And but Catherine all, didn't want anything, any of it either. And no, so. she didn't want to have any part of it as well. And that was when he realized that that was part of the the incentive. It was it, he was like, "This is worse off than I realized." Right. So Catherine is taken to the far off prison island, which is actually built on the stump of the great tree. The great tree. Okay, I feel like I did some sort of puzzle that involved the great tree. Okay. No, we did talk about the great tree. In fact, you you had to describe an image of it, I believe. Okay, now I remember the great tree. Yeah. All right. Basically, the great tree is just a gigantic tree, but it towers over the landscape. It's Take it's, a redwood and then multiply it by 100, that's the great tree. Right. And it's singular. It's not like there's multiple great trees. Right. This thing is massive, and it's been felled. Whoa. And there's a prison on top of it, housing <sighs> just her. 
How's he? Because she's that dangerous? What is she? A witch? Well, technically, you could say she is with the power <laughs> that she has. Later on, after all this is done, the stranger appears. I thought I'd have more of a reaction to that, but I suddenly just thought of the Clash's The Stranger song. <laughs> so you go through and explore the various stages of the, the various islands and stuff. You learn all about the different aspects. You have to yeah. understand the animals. You have to understand the different guilds a little bit. Yeah. They do a lot of weird door games in this game. I'm trying to remember if I did any of those with our last live stream in Riven. You had one, because there's one where you have to go through the door. You have to open the door, go through, turn around, close the doors, and then it exposes two open hallways. Right. So eventually you get through all of this. You get to Tay. You meet, like, you get captured by the Rivenese, but they're like, you're not bad. Somehow they get a message from Catherine, hmm. and you get your stuff back and everything because they had taken your stuff. Basically, when you get there, you're attacked. Right. Quote, unquote. But you're fine. <laughs> I'm kind of brushing over this because I want people to play the game. We'll get to a better way to play the game soon that hopefully will come out soon. Uh, no and, date yet. And, and just so you guys know, Mystic did skip over a lot of stuff because... I haven't even gotten to the point where he's really describing it in the hour. Well, a lot so of what we we're talking about really... is puzzles. Right. You know, I can explain. You start on Temple Island. You figure out how there's multiple sides to this one room. If you can rotate the one room, then there's right. other path. But that's not lore. That's not lore. So, but there are, but there is lore in there. If you remember, there's stained glass in that temple. Exactly. And that tells the story. Kind of of what we just discussed. It kind of tells the story of the Book of Atris mm -hmm. in stained glass form. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, also you see that Gen is totally not a god because he has a hollow projector that you can sit in that projects his face into a temple. You don't get to see this unless you walk in at the right time. That's right. But yeah. Uh, also there's like tramways that are connecting all the different islands. Oh yeah. That was pretty interesting. That's one of my favorite ways to travel, although the minecart's my favorite. You didn't get to that, I don't think. Mm. Is it like Donkey Kong? Do I have to jump? No. Okay. <laughs> it's just a cool animated sequence. Okay. But so you get, you explore the islands, you find the different islands, you find out these fire marble domes that power the book. You can't open it yet because you, you don't have the combination. I think okay. the combination is literally 233. Three. I don't remember exactly if it is or not. It might be one of those ones that change. One thing they did in this game compared to the previous game, okay, up until the recent re-release, is there were two puzzles, or is it three? Two or three puzzles that the they're combination puzzles, and the numbers always change. Every wow. single playthrough, they change. Interesting. Okay. So you have to play through to that point, read a journal, and then you can go and do the puzzle. Interesting, okay. In fact, it's kind of funny if you watch a speed run of the original Mist, mm. it can be about 40 seconds long because mm. all you have to do is activate all the marker switches, go back to the dock, flip it back up, grab the white page, go in the fireplace, type in the code, turn around, give it to Atris. <laughs> right, exactly. In this one, you have to go to Gin's lab, get the code, uh, get to the 233rd age, get the, it's like, nah. Yeah. It, there's a lot more steps to speed yeah. through. Okay. And it's kind of funny to watch people do this because literally they have memorized the click points. So you'll just be, you'll see like each frame will be up for like half a second. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes. I have a lot of respect for speedrunners because it is a skill that I have no interest in doing, <laughs> but I have a lot of respect for perfecting because it, it's essentially an, an, an attention to detail that I just, right. It's not my thing. But you eventually get to Tay, you meet the Moiety. Mm hmm. You get all your stuff back that was stolen from you at the beginning, because of course stuff is stolen from you at the beginning. That Always, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's half the games. It's like, oh, this is missing. Go find it. And sometimes it's your stuff, especially with Metroid. Uh, yes, very true. <laughs> how many how many times did we lose stuff in between in Metroid Prime? Between Metroid, what did we cover? We covered the first. We covered two Zero Chronicle. Mission and Metroid Prime. Yeah. Yeah. So. You get the code to the Fire Marble Domes. You open the Fire Marble Domes. We did skip a lot. 
Lot, yeah. lot, lot. No, that was my only point earlier is that we are we are skipping through a lot of the stuff because you're you're missing some of the atmosphere, of the things that we did in yes. in the live There's stream. There's so. things with wooden eyes and sounds, and you have to pay attention to sounds and shapes of things. There are people who are trying to stay away from you. As right. Well. There's people in this one as opposed to the original one. Yeah. But yeah, a lot of that is just puzzle, puzzle, puzzle. A lot of it is understanding the world too, but I want to explain it all because if I explain it, that ruins the puzzle. You know, exactly. it's kind of that weird thing of, oh, this is great lore, but it ruins the puzzle. That, yeah, that's fine. That might be a special episode someday where it's a spoiler filled. For Riven? Yeah, thing for Riven. But I, but we're, we're That'd going to be a short episode. The, yeah, we're going through the story, story set up and background for right. Riven right now. So actually, it's, there, there is one thing that's interesting. The way that you get to the Mawaiti age is through a puzzle in the back of a prison cell. So basically the prisoners who are found have an egress to the, like can be immediately leave. That's really nice. And of course, of course they figured out something clever like that. So, um, and it's kind of a cool, pu- it's a cool visual how you get it. It's eventually like this weird water effect moving horizontally away from it's cool. But mm-hmm. anyway, you go to Tay, you get the code to the Fire Marble Domes, you open the Fire Marble Dome, you get to the book, which takes you to the 233rd age, where Gen is. Okay. And you meet Gen. All right. And he sings opera. Not really. There's an Easter egg where the actor sings opera as he's walking around, but... What the <laughs> heck? Is he an opera singer? In he's a good life? singer. I don't know if he's an opera singer, but... Okay. Also, keep in mind that all the actors are real actors. This isn't CGI. These are all real people oh, acting. Oh, so this is like Tex Murphy. Right. In that regard. Yeah. Okay. I believe, it that, I believe it was blue screen, not green screen at this time. Okay. Yeah. I remember those times. But you meet Gen, and he says he's changed and is a different person now. And it can be convincing, except for the fact that you find out that he smokes frogs. He smokes frogs. What? Yeah, basically he he catches frogs and uses it as a pipe additive for smoking. Why? Is he addicted to their poison or something or yikes, <laughs> man, that's just biz- that's bizarre and so I could understand But he's definitely he's definitely not changed. That's a thing. I was I was going to say I could understand some other actual addictive substance that you could you could see but you're saying he smokes frogs and it's just the idea of like putting a frog alive over a smoker i don't believe it's alive okay basically i think he kills it and then they he grinds it up for uh basically like a, a tobacco substitute or something okay that weird weirdo that's just a weirdo thing he gives you access to all the islands though and this is the first time you can go and actually talk to Catherine. okay so you go to prison, you talk to Catherine, and basically she knows that she's being watched. Mm-hmm. Because there, there's a whole island called Survey Island, at least in in the walkthrough, that most people will find useful. Um, but Gen has set up to watch. You know, you can you can watch I think various might cameras have seen and a stuff. Little, at least a hint of that in our in our last live stream. Possibly, I think you might have gotten there, but I don't think we went down to where it is. So you talk to Catherine, you go back, Gen wants you to use the trap book. He doesn't know it's a trap book. He's uh, not adept enough to see the subtle changes in the text to realize that it's right, a trap book. exactly. So you use it, then he uses it, and then you're outside. Basically, when you spawn in on the 233rd age, you spawn into a cage. Of course you do. Yeah. When you, he, when you use the trap book, and then when he uses it, you're outside the cage. Oh, wow. Okay. Find a secret code. You find his journal, a secret code to Catherine's prison. You also see, you know, this picture of his wife and all the stuff that he was talking about. Right, exactly. The only person that he has ever actually loved after there can no longer do anything for him. Exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah, they're no longer useful. They're no longer useful. He still loves her. Right. Which is weird, but I guess everyone has one. <laughs> No, I don't think that's true for everybody, but at least it, it, at least Gen has one. Right. I'll say that. So when Gen was doing experiments, or actually, I did miss one thing. Gen was exper- was looking into the the Starfisher, as I said at the, at the beginning of his part of this whole story. Mm-hmm. 
one of the things that he did just to cement his evilness. Oh no! Oh no! Is tossed people into it. Wow! Wow! The 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 disposability of human life is. I think they were. I th- egregious. I think they were prisoners, but that doesn't excuse it. No, that never excuses it. What the heck? Eventually, he does build because it is a vacuum. It's just sucking air in. He yeah. does eventually have the islanders build like this metal skin over the fissure. It's actually there when you first link into Riven. It's in front of you. Oh wow! Like okay. fifty feet in front of you. So basically, you go back to the beginning. And you can basically crank this thing down until it breaks the protective glass. Uh Uh-huh. And everything starts collapsing. And the sky changes color. And then Atris comes in. (laughs) Oh, wow. So that's the big signal. That's the big signal. And Catherine, if you do this all correctly, there's obviously multiple endings. Yeah. But if you do this all correctly, Catherine comes in. The Rivenese have all been evacuated to Tay. They both go to Mist. And you fall into the fissure. Oh, which then brings you back to where you were. Right. Before. Where there's presumably a mist book on the ground still because there's still more games to come. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Just keep tossing those (laughs) books down. I was told to write another. (laughs) So that's the story. Obviously, there's multiple endings here. If you don't even find Tay and you break that glass, because you can brute force the combination on that thing. Yeah. And you break the glass... Then everything just ends and no one comes. Right, exactly. Um, if you do find, if you don't trap Gen, you die. Oh. If okay. you don't free Catherine, I believe you also no. If you if you trap Gen but don't free Catherine, Atris comes, but Catherine's dead. Oh like, God! So that's the bad endings and stuff. There's multiple endings in this. My favorite part of this game when i first played it was actually the strategy guide oh wow okay and this is the official riven sequel to miss strategy guide by brady games okay so back not when the, brady games existed so not the prima strategy guide not the which, prima. which we're all used to this is the one by william h keith jr and nina barton and the best thing is chapter five is the entire walkthrough mm-hmm. as a novel Oh, yeah. With thoughts and everything. You've mentioned that. I have. The thing that I always kind of forgot, at the back, they start going into quantum mechanics and multiverse theory as to how, if this could actually be a real thing. Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Because Mist kind of gets that brain part going. Right. Well, we were talking about that in the first couple of episodes, because essentially... It's right. That's what they're doing. Because, yeah. So that's Riven. Now, I did say earlier that there, I want people to play this. There is a group, I believe they were called Volt uh, 59 Volts, and I believe it's called the Starry Expanse Project. Okay. And it's at starryexpanse.com. It is a group of people who were, who have been for years now trying to remake Riven. In 3D. Nice. Through multiple engines. Oh, wow. And the hard part is stuff in this game yeah. does not make sense when you put it into 3D. Interesting. Like there is, so I mentioned the minecart. Yeah. The minecart makes an impossible turn if you actually watch the video. There's a point where the light goes dim and it makes this impossible turn. Okay. Looks fine in 2D. Right. The sec you put it in 3D, the track is thinner than the cart. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. Not, and not possible. The other problem is Cyan lost their original stuff. <gasps> no. So there's nothing to work from. So basically what these guys do is they will take screenshots of the game and triangulate with geometry, like with the distances and everything. I, I'm, I'm just floored. Now. That's a lot of dedication. Just over a year ago. They haven't updated in over a year, I don't think. Just over a year ago, they got roped into Cyan Worlds. Oh, okay. So the fan project is now official. Whoa. There's been no update on that since then, as far as I know. I haven't checked in the past well, okay, week or so. But you said it was a little over a year ago? Mm-hmm. So this was probably beginning of 2020, end of 2019? Right. Before the disaster times. Right. Also... 
out of nowhere, since we last covered Mist, actually, since then, Cyan has announced and released a remake of the first game. Right. I have not played this yet because it is a plat- on a platform I will not support. It's oh. on the it's on Quest VR. It's basically Facebook's VR system or whatever. Oh, yeah, I'm not yeah. Gonna, I'll not wait for it to come out on PC. But I want to know if they've changed anything because we'll have to do an addendum to our episodes. Oh, okay. But the theory is from some people in the fan community is that the Star Expanse team helped out on that, and then they'll move on to Riven. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So that's Riven. Gen is trapped. Yeah, just like his grandsons. Catherine- that he doesn't know exist from what we know. Right. Catherine's free. Yay. Atris is free. They both can go back to Mist. Mm-hmm. We will catch up with them again in a future episode in Mist 3. I'm debating if we should do the Book of Tiana before then. Because right. we're kind of leaving Tiana's influence behind a little bit now. Right. So... The Book of Tiana is a lot of deep history, and you know what? Actually, given the fact that the Book of Tiana covers the Denis to a great deal, and then there's the Book of Denis, which covers the Denis in the present in a great deal. Okay. The present of the games, I should say. Right. Um, Maybe we'll cover that after Mist 4. We'll cover both of those books. Okay. Yeah. I think that'll work well. Yeah. And... You'll just have to follow us on our social media to figure out when the heck that's happening because, unfortunately, it's... We're not going to cover Mist next episode. (laughs) No, no, no. We can't. We can't. It is a series we're always going to go back to, but... I hope there's more than the ones that are... I hope they come out with more. They've always said that they may come out with another one. Right. There's also the oft-rumored Book of Miram, I think it's called, that has been in hell for years. Oh. they. I think they were supposed to come out over a decade ago, and it still hasn't come out, but they keep saying that someday, maybe. like. <laughs> right. Sometimes you get caught in copyright. It's not disaster. copyright related. It's the fact that, if you remember, all the books were published under, I want to say Hyperion. It, it was Hyperion because Disney was courting... The right. Millers for the Mist Island. Listen to episode one. You guys will hear all this. But there the was Mist a, Island, and I'm so frustrated it doesn't <laughs> exist because it's just so the Mist Island theme park attraction. Good. It's such a and it was a, it was a, basically an AR game before AR games could right. really be fiscally possible the way that they are today. Right. So anyway, that's where we're gonna leave it. Yeah. Happy first anniversary of Lord Woo! Together. Happy first episode. On the Boss Rush Games Podcast Network. Yay! (laughs) Follow at Boss Rush Games on Twitter. You'll see not only stuff about us, but other great podcasts that Boss Rush Games is supporting and putting out on their own. They do also live Twitch streams. I've been trying to be in the ones on Saturday when I can, and I don't have our little buddy interrupting us. (laughs) But of course, you can also follow us at Lord Together, Instagram, Twitter, email us, lordtogether at gmail.com. Support us, patreon.com slash lordtogether to get extra goodies, get your episodes early. And thank you for listening. Thank you very much for listening. We love having you guys here, and we will see you next time. See you then. Bye. Bye. Bye.